probably the most enduring symbol or indicator of Hindu Dharma is the Hindu temple. India is a land filled with temples. Even though many temples were destroyed in the course of time, many have been rebuilt. And there are massive temples throughout most of the country, more so in the south, but even extending to every corner of India and even beyond. In fact, the largest Hindu temple complex is Angkor Wat in Cambodia, which was originally also a Hindu kingdom. So what is the Hindu temple? Of course, we see its magnificence of stone. We see the extraordinary sculpture that it contains. In fact, India has more sculpture than all the rest of the world put together because the temples are full of it. And some of these temples may be carved in solid rock, and they may be in caves, or they may be chiseled in granite and put together on the outside. And the Hindu devotion has been such, even when invaders have destroyed temples many times, Hindus have continued to rebuild them and honor them. The temple was the center, and in some parts of India still is today, of the Hindu community. Not simply a place of worship, but also a place of uh, people coming together, a place of education, a place of learning, a place of uh, festivals. So what the temple is, it's a doorway that connects our human realm with the transcendent realms a place where the deities can uh, descend, a place where our consciousness can ascend, a place where deeper rituals can be performed, and also deeper meditations can be performed, and our human actions can be made sacred or sanctified with the cosmic powers of the devatas and extending from everything to marriage and naming of children to the regular type of uh, festival activities that go on. Hindu temples may have their unique deity forms and names, their special times, their special celebrations. They may be for a certain segment of the society. Uh, they may be activated at different times of the day relative to uh, particular events. So they have a tremendous diversity into as, as regards their iconography and also as regards to uh, what occurs within them. Uh, Hindus also have their own uh, shrines in their homes. And we also have Hindu sacred sites uh, where the temples may be small or not there at all, like we have uh, the confluences of rivers like Ganga and Yamuna. We have the sacred Himalayas, Mount Kailas, uh, which is now uh, in Tibet, but it was originally part of uh, India. And <clears throat> all the sacred sites in nature. And in that regard, Hindus find sacred sites everywhere, and they have the ability to discover or erect or make temples uh, also uh, everywhere. So the temple is also then connected to the festivals and also to the pilgrimage. Pilgrimage or yatra is going to temples or going to sacred sites. Uh, recently, we had the Kumbh Mela in Prayag Raj, the, where the Ganga and Yamuna come together. In a period of about six weeks, I think they said over 200 million people came. And I think we can easily say that given all the different types of yatra, or pilgrimage going on from regular daily, monthly activities to yearly festivals, that there is more pilgrimage going on almost in any single day in India than all the rest of the world uh, put together. It's become part of the entire Hindu way of life and the Indian way of life to go to sacred sites, to worship there, to honor them, to connect to the gurus, to the deity forms, to the nature, and to reaffirm the sacred geography, to bring the sacred geography into one's life. India as a country is very interesting because it has a population greater than all of Africa, uh, double that of Europe. Uh, various uh, states within India, like Tamil Nadu, have a history and a literature longer than any country in Europe. And India has been subject to a lot of foreign invasions. 
And yet there is a unity. And that unity is because of the culture, the sacred uh, geography, the rituals, the temples, the activities that uh, go on. It's a way of integrating the people with this greater sacred presence. And the yogic cultures, you have great yogis from Tamil Nadu to the Himalayas, and they often go to all the places, go throughout all the sacred uh, geographies. So Hindu Dharma teaches that we should have temples. Temples are doorways to the infinite. There's a science to building the temple, special architecture. There's a science uh, to the uh, rituals. And Hindu Dharma teaches us that our lives should be a pilgrimage. They should be the, the Jiva Yatra, the life pilgrimage, should be a spiritual journey and a spiritual quest. And for that, Hindu Dharma and India offers so, such a great variety of wonderful locations, sites, temples, and the greatest variety of spiritual festivals than any country, place in the world, extending to nine days, ten days, different seasons, so that the spirituality becomes a way of life, it becomes a celebration, it becomes a way of connecting to nature, and it becomes a way of honoring all aspects of the greater existence that we are part of.